UFC 201 was supposed to feature the long-awaited, much-anticipated return of Ian McCall, had not fought since January of 2015, was oh so close to retiring. And unfortunately, on Thursday night, we found out the fight wasn't happening because his opponent, Justin Scoggins, failed to make weight, actually couldn't even get to the scale, pulled out Thursday night. As a result, Ian McCall left opponentless. So we wanted to talk to Uncle Creepy about that whole bizarre situation. He joins us now, I believe, via the magic of Skype. There he is, Uncle Creepy himself. Ian, how are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Now, where are you right now, Ian? I'm getting a U-Haul. My girlfriend's moving today, so I'm uh, oh my gosh. helping her do that. Uh, so my, my coach did take the day off, so I, I, would, I, mean, I was going to take the day off anyways because I have to help her move. But, uh, yeah. Is she moving in with you in your, in your parents' house? <laughs> uh, that, what a story that would be. Yeah, my mom, I'm sure, I think my mom wants her to, but I, I'm going to be moving out soon to my place or get my own spot, so, and then maybe she'll move into my place, I don't know, it's just, you know, that, that'll, I'll wait till after my fight to, to figure that out. Okay, now here's the thing, there's a lot of activity going on back there, do you mind if we call you on your phone, because I just want to hear you. Uh, yeah, fine. yeah, okay. Yeah, just let's, let's just call him on okay. his cell phone because I love seeing Ian McCall's face, but I want to hear him uh, more importantly. So New York Rick is going to call him on his phone as he uh, is in the midst of helping his girlfriend move. What a mensch Ian McCall is hooking us up with uh, some time here on this Monday morning over there in Orange County, California. Very disappointing. We were talking to him on Thursday, was so excited to make his return, had thought about walking away from the sport just due to injuries, not because he wanted to. And, uh, you know, literally, what was it? Five hours later, we find out that he will not be fighting. Ian, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm devastated to hear this news, by the way. This is one of my favorite stories in MMA, you and your family, that you're moving out. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's not... <laughs> It's not for sure, but most likely, <laughs> um, you know, after, after this fight, I will be, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll like move down the street. Okay. Cause I, right. you know, it, it, it's, but then again, you never know. I, I could just not. And I mean, I, it, it's just, it's up in the air. At this point, sorry. At this point, it doesn't really, really, you know, I don't know. It's just, a, who knows? <laughs> okay. Um, when did you find out? Cause like I said, I spoke to you on Thursday at the media day. It was around two thirty, two forty five local time. Justin was there. He seemed okay. When did you find out that this fight was off? Uh, like directly after that. Like minutes later? Yeah, I left. I went home. I went to the hotel. I uh, had my nutritionist to make me food. And as I'm sitting there eating the food, I found out. And, uh, then I walked down to Gus's where my, my coaches and some friends were eating. They were eating delicious soul food. Uh, and yeah, we just, we talked about it and, and I, you know, they just kind of told me whatever, you know, this is, this is what he's saying. So I said, all right, um, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. <laughs> what was the reason that you were given? Uh, because he can't make the weight. Hmm. And then he, and you know, uh, he, I feel like I got played by him, you know, cause he acts like he, like we're friends and we're nice and, and I'm, 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 I'm feeling, you know, like shame on me cause all this trash he's talking and all this dumb stuff and personal stuff he's bringing up. He's like screenshotting, uh, he's like screenshotting text messages from my agent to his agent and like making up all this stuff. And, and, and a big part of me just wants to like bury him as far as like making him look like an idiot, because there's a lot of things that the young man has said and done that are, that are very stupid. Like he tried to come off smart and like him talking about, Oh, well, you know, I was at 2% body fat when, and doctor said I can't cut anymore. Well, if you understand this thing called science, um, if you're under three, three and a half percent body fat, you're feeding off your organs. Like you're actual, actually feeding off your organs. So, so you're lying. Like, hmm. If you're going to try and sound smart, at least be smarter than, than someone who's at least somewhat knowledgeable like myself. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I'm just saying, like, you, you, you're, you're trying to, uh, to give excuses, and, and I'm sorry, but don't, don't make me look like the asshole when you're, you're, the things you're saying aren't true, you know? Hmm. Um, and, I, again, I'm not going to call them out. I don't really care. It's like there's so, much, there, there's so many things that are just completely silly that he's, he's digging his own grave and he'll make himself look stupid. I'm taking the high road and just going, okay, well you keep, you keep saying stuff and 
trying to make me look like somehow the bad guy when this is all your fault. <laughs> and, <laughs> he goes, well, meet me at meet me at, at, at any way. I'll fight you at any way, bro. I'm like, well, fight me at 126 then. Yeah. Well, what about, what about that weight? <laughs> uh, you've been around this game a long time. Obviously, we've seen people like miss weight, you know, the day of, on the scale, all that stuff. But like on the Thursday before, it, kind of a weird one, right? Have you ever seen that before? Have you ever been faced with that before? No, and I mean, it was yeah, it was 24 hours before. Yeah. And he, you know, then I already get the info that he's not going to make it. Okay, well, no, I'm not going to fight you at a bantamweight fight because I'm not a bantamweight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and like... You know, you can say whatever you want. It's not going to change my mind. Like, you're not making me look stupid, so that doesn't like, anger me. Um, and then, you know, he. What I think happened is that uh, I don't know if it's mental issues. You know, like maybe nerves or maybe outside stuff. I mean, I maybe he's, he's on drugs. Who knows? Like he's just acting very erratic and silly. Um, but. I think it was a mental lapse where he broke down. And, I, and this is just speculation. This is my bro sign. Um, where he probably snapped and couldn't make the weight. So we started eating and drinking because huh. everybody, I mean, everybody that was on the card, I'm not going to name any names, but we're talking trainers and strength coaches and other fighters were MFing him. I mean, to me, like crazy. Wow. I mean, they were just like, you know, fuck him this and that guy's a piece of shit and all this stuff. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's. <laughs> like, well, everyone simmer down. You know? um, like I, I was out last night. Or I was out yesterday, and I saw him, you know, munching on food. And, and you know, I'm like, these are trainers who are out eating whatever they want. They're out, you know, you know, testing out Atlanta's delicious food. And he's out. <laughs> he was eating all day, drinking all day. What was I doing? I was right. cutting weight. I was doing my job. So, you know, I, I just, think, I just think he broke down, and I think, I mean, it, it could have been a mixture of personal issues and his uh, lack of discipline or I don't know. He, he's a young guy and, and he'll learn from this. You know, like I keep saying, he, he'll, I'm sure he'll come back stronger. He, he's a stud, but you know, this was just a, a maturity thing and a, a self-control thing that he seemed to have lost it, you know, and, and that's no one's fault but his own. Did the UFC try to keep you on the card? Did they offer you another fight? Did they try to get you to fight him at 135? How'd that go? Um, the, you know, UFC didn't even offer me to fight at 35. Oh, okay. They, they just said, okay, well, you know, we, we know your answer. <laughs> they, they knew what I was going to say. So they, um, they just let it slide. And, you know, they said, make weight just in case something happens. Just okay. in case... Wilson or, or someone, something, ha- you know, something crazy happens. And of course, you know, it didn't, which, which we all kind of figured it wasn't going to happen. But, uh, you know, it, I had to make weight just in case because you never know. I mean, people have, have hurt themselves last minute. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, pe- people were trying to say, oh, well, they need to take out, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? The kid that, uh, the kid that, that Wilson fought and then you put you in there and switch him around and pay him. I'm like, no, they don't because, that's unfair. To, that's unfair to those guys. Yeah, you know they 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 were ready for certain fights, and you can't just like interchange stuff. Like, right. You know that's not how it works. Um. So. <clears throat> so you know, it, it, of course, it's, it's nice to get paid. You know, all the money that I, that I did get paid. Um. I mean, really nice. I had to talk with Dana and Sean and thank them. Um. Did but, you get your win money too? I got, got my win money. How'd you convince them to my, do that? Uh, my, I got my Reebok money. Whoa. Um, yeah, everything. The UFC really stepped up and they took care of me. Did you have to convince so, uh, them to do that? Um, no, no. I mean, they, they seemed to be much obliged to do it. Wow. They, they were, they were very great. happy to do it. And, and you're know, talking to Dana at the fight and he just gave me a hug and was like, hey man, I'm proud of you. Thank you. You know, you're, you did good and you deserve this. Like, get out there and have fun and spend your money and I'll see you hopefully in a couple of weeks. Wow. That's amazing. So, are, are you done with Scoggins? Uh, are they talking something else? Because you're talking about your next fight already. Do you even know what the next fight is? No, but I, I want Wilson. That's what you uh, want. Yeah, it's, a good, it's a good fight. Um, you know, I, I think it's the best fight as far as getting me back in the fold. Uh, you know, he was supposed to fight Demetrius. Um... And that everyone wants to see me fight Demetrius. So I'm driving a U-Haul. I should probably slow down. 
Um, <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, uh, that, that's, I think that's a fight that's perfect for me because it, it puts me back into contention right away. And I, I don't think, you know, I mean, people, you know, let's say I, I knock him out, you know, devastating fashion. People are like, oh, well, you, need, you need a title shot. Well, okay, let, uh, sure, but let me fight. I'll fight somebody else first. I'll fight a couple people first. You know, I'm, I'm not worried about it, but it, it just gets eyes on me. And it gets me, it gets me, you know, a, a good ranking. It keeps me relevant with, um, with top names. You know, I'm, I'm here to fight the best people. Any chances happens at 202, which seem to be the fight card that you wanted to fight at? Uh, that, that's what, that's what we're, we're, we're trying for. Okay. Wow. And we, we really want... Um, yeah. I have no idea what I'm at. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying for 202. Okay. Um, just a few other questions for you and then I'll let you go and I appreciate you squeezing us in. Uh, mentally, since no you had, since you hadn't fought since January of 2015, I mean, for this rug to get pulled under you 24 hours before the weigh-ins, less, how did you deal with it? Um, well, I just laughed it off. I was like, okay. Well, I mean, I, once I knew I was getting paid, um, yeah. I mean, even if I was only getting my show money, well, I was getting my show money to cut weight and they, they you know, they, they promised me and I, I have all the faith in, in UFC. They've always taken care of me. They've always taken care of me. Um, you know, I was at least getting my show money. Right. And then they added in the, the win money and the rebuff money. So it's like, and that, that that's what I what I get being a, a, a big company man, you know, a, a really in, in taking the high road and, and you know being a bigger person in this whole situation because I could have thrown a fit, I could have freaked out and, and talked all kinds of shit and whatever, but why? It's pointless, you know. It, 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 no no one did anything wrong except for for, for Justin, and and he, God, he keeps saying stuff, and I'm like, man, you need to. He, he even tried to apologize to me like in a private message, and I just didn't respond because. Hmm. At first, I was just second of all. I see all the stuff he's still saying, and it's like you, you, you're just you're just acting like a dumb child, you know. And, and it's like, it's like okay, I, you know, I've, I've hey man, you, you're just making yourself look real stupid here, and, and, and thanks for you know letting me not have to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I, I honestly don't have to say a word. I just have to sit back and just kind of laugh at him. You had said something very interesting Thursday night, I believe it was to MMA Junkie, about just the weigh-ins in general and why you weren't all that upset because the weigh-in thing is kind of crazy. Cutting weight is kind of crazy. Like, you, you, there's a part of you that sort of felt for him. Is that is that an accurate thing to say? Is that how you were feeling? Yeah. I mean, because weighing, weighing, I mean, cutting weight's hard. And, you know, he's he's gigantic. I, when I first saw him, I was like, Jesus, <laughs> you're huge. And, uh, and, you know, I, I said that and I didn't know all, all the information. I don't pay attention to much. And I've, I've, you know, what I have paid attention to, like him talking and the things he's saying, like I said, back to having 2% body fat and, you know, running eight miles a day and not having eaten in two days. Well, I know you're uneducated then. You know, you're, you're a, a, a dumb kid who is, who hasn't done the due diligence to figure out how to cut weight properly. Like I, I was talking to one of his coaches. I'm like, you need to get that kind of nutritionist. Whether he's at uh, 35s or not, well, he needs to educate himself on what he's doing. And a lot of fighters do. I mean, I, I see and I hear people from men, women, coaches, where they say stuff. And I'm like, are you fucking, are you retarded? <laughs> like, you know how hard cutting weight is and how bad for it, how bad for us it is? And these people have no idea what they're doing. I mean, I, I have my guy from Nutrition for Life, Eric, and... I mean, he's a good friend of mine. I talk to him like all the time, and I be- I bug him with questions, not even about myself, about my uh, about the fighters I train, you know, about the young guys that I'm trying to be an example to, and like, you know, the way to the way to eat and how to fast and and what time to eat certain foods at and what you put in your body after weigh-ins and before weigh-ins and like, you know, this like all this different stuff. It's it, it, sure, I guess it's complex, but it's really not. It's food, and you're a professional athlete. Learn what you need to learn and educate yourself so you can you can have an easier weight cut and you can have less body fat and a healthier mind and healthier body and you you're not on the verge of death when you when you are cutting weight you know and then after weight cutting 
um, you know, you, you, you're, you're properly fueled up. You know, you don't, don't want to build a race car, a build a race motor, and then put shit fuel in it. Mm-hmm. You put race, race, race gas. That's what you do. And these people are just, it, it just really, like, boggles the mind about, about how, how uh, uneducated. I don't want to say, I hate saying dumb because, I mean, some, of, some people are stupid, but um, <laughs> they're just uneducated. And people need to step it up, because I have. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but, you know, I, I work my butt off, and I'm, you know, I've, like, you know, I, this whole thing about, like, PEDs and people's bodies changing. Uh, I'm more ripped than I was my last fight. Hmm. Why? Because because I'm healthy. Because I eat really, really, really healthy. Because <laughs> I work my my ass off in the gym, and my diet is on point. Like it, there, there's so many different ways to make yourself healthy, and people aren't doing it. And I'm just I just always just laugh it off. And I, I know maybe I'm a cynic, but but I, I would I would like to see um, you know educators step up or uh, you know or fighters step up and educate themselves on proper nutrition or at least hire somebody because if you hire somebody you're going to learn you're going to learn stuff no matter what you know and, and, I, and I, I'm, I, I do this also because I'm a coach you know I'm not going to fight for that much longer and if I'm going to have my fighters doing things they're going to they're going to do them properly and I saw that you were in attendance on Saturday so you stuck around for the fights you're hanging out with the likes of Dwight Howard and whatnot, but internally was that like the ultimate you know for lack of a better word like blue balls for you i mean you go through all that work you show <laughs> yeah. up and you can't you can't release the whatever you had inside you that you know that you get from fighting it, that must have been a tough thing to take in no uh no actually you know it wasn't I, it's an honor to be there hmm. you know, i get to hang out with my friends I, I get to hang out with ddp and my girlfriend alicia and dwight howard and two chains and you know, like all these funny people that, you know, and, and, you know, Vin Diesel was there with Tyrese and all these people, you know, you, you that are fun and you get to hang out with and screw around with. And, and, uh, and I never, I never thought I'd be fighting again, you know? So mm. just, just being in the fold and dealing with all this and all the attention and all the fun. And it, it, it's, just, I'm just having a good time. I'm all smiles. And, you know, my career, you know how weird my career has been. Yes. So I literally just, I laugh it all off. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like, whatever that this is life like my life is weird and crazy and it's never going to be different so <laughs> i just I just learned to laugh um were you impressed with wilson uh, i didn't i didn't watch it i walked in um right literally right after that fight but oh. I, I do need to sit down and watch it okay uh do you think you're getting that one like did you talk to them afterwards and say that's what we want and and did they seem open that, to you it know what, that, I know there's one other name um, oh. that is thrown around, but but they they want me to fight Wilson because it's 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 a relevant fight. Yeah, you know, and I and I, I get to pull like the the Diaz brother stuff, um, and just kind of walk in out of nowhere and be like, hey, I want this. And I do it. <laughs> you know, like it, it, coming off a loss and not being around for you know over 18 months, and and it's cool knowing that I, I'm I kind of have that sway where I yeah. go, hey, listen, like. That's cool, you know. People that just shows the respect that I've earned and that I've um, that that I get from from not only the fans but from the company that employs me. You know, the the people that run this, you know, the biggest organization on the planet. By the way, who's the other name? Uh, I think it's Gian Herrera. That, that was mentioned. Okay. Okay. Um, and he's a stud too. You know, it's yeah, right. Uh, but you know he's not ranked. Right. So if I have to, I, I would you know I would love to fight anybody because getting paid twice in one month is is nice. Um, but uh, I, I really 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 want the the two hundred two card, and I really 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 want. You know, he, he was how fast was this fight? Oh, it was like two minutes or something. Yeah. So he, he's unscathed. I'm unscathed. We both cut weight. You know, at the same day, both made it. Um, and, you know, it would be an honor to, to be on arguably, you know, the biggest hype card in, in UFC history, which is 202, yep. because of, you know, Connor, Connor and Nate. Well, I think this is a first for me. Uncle Creepy, you are a class act. Uh, those two words don't really go together, but uh, man, you handled this You handled this really well. Uh, I thought it was great that you were the first one to weigh in Friday morning. You didn't do a lot of crap talking. You, you really handled this with class. So kudos to you, my man. I hope you get that fight at 202. Uh, it was great to see you. I was so happy that you were finally back. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see you in there, but hey, if we get to see you in three weeks on an even bigger card, then maybe it was, uh, you know, it was all for a good cause and you got paid two times as well. So appreciate you squeezing us in, Ian. Really do. Good luck to your girlfriend as she moves. And hopefully we'll see you in a couple of weeks in Las Vegas. 
Thank you. Sounds good. All right. There he is. Ian McCall stopping by, uh, really putting out the blueprint, how you should handle a situation like that. You know, he was very disappointed, but maybe it all turns out for the best and he gets to fight on that even bigger card against potentially a bigger name as well.